afternoon, uh, people. This is Tommy Ruck on the phone. I have uh, Bert and Chris Harris, who are part of SBAI, uh, who helped us put this program together. Uh, we welcome you to this program uh, and hope that you'll find it interesting. The program will be posted on our website later under our archives under the Property Brokers and Freight Forward Bonding Program. And if at your request, you can call Beth and we can download you the applications and things like this. So uh, I get, here we go. Go ahead. The new brokerage requirement. I want to remind you that, and we sent a blog on this, as much publicity about this. They must divide the brokerage operation from the transportation operation. This is part of the MAP uh, 21 initiative. Also, freight forwarders will now also have to have a bond. This is new. Before, they did not. And thirdly, the bond limit is to be increased on from 10000 to 75000 I want most of you know this already, but I want to remind you, the people who do not, this bond does not protect the public. This bond is for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is if the broker or the freight forwarder now does not pay the trucking company who they arranged to haul the load, then the trucking company can make a claim against the bond for their payment uh, uh, for providing the transportation. This is a critical understanding of this because later when we talk about what brokers we want to be a part of this program, we want to be sure the brokers that are part of this program are financially stable and that will be able to pay the trucking companies that they arrange the loads for them, as well as the freight forwarders now who, arrange, who they arrange loads for them, the freight that is due. I copied some suggestions from, uh, from the, the, some publications. Again, you can download this. One of the, the suggestions that, uh, that was published here, again referring to the MAP21 initiative, is the separation of the freight forward and the motor carrier's authority. The MAP21 requires separation of motor carrier's authority and broker's authority. In the past, it was very fuzzy as to whether the freight broker could operate under the same authority as affiliated motor carrier. The new bill requires both entities to run under separate authorities. Depending on the situation, this may involve the new uh, ID number, separation of payroll, those kind of things. The key part of this here is that if you provide, if you provide a load and you're unlicensed and uh, not a broker, it could leave your insured subject to a $10,000 per load fine by the government. The second thing is, is the increase in the bond from 10000 to 75000 uh, This increase will result in a higher premium of the bond and could create a collateral. We'll talk about that later on our particular program. Originally, this was going to be enforced or starting July 1, 2013. It now has been pushed back to October 1, 2013. The concern that you have on this pushing back is that uh, there is some suits still out there that's trying to overturn this. But to this point, there is no indication that the courts are going to be favorable to unturn this. What we need to look at is the motor carriers. If the MC number now issued to your insurers provide authority for both transportation, either common or contract, and brokerage or freight forward, they must separate these entities by 10-1-2013. In other words, when you go into SAFER and go into license and insurance, and you pull up by the DOT number or the MC number, you're insured. And when you're insured and on that, it shows under license and insurance that they have both brokerage authority and common or contract authority or common contract authority and freight forward authority, then they must separate these entities as of uh, October 1, 2013. It, it is not clear if there needs to be a separate legal entity. This is still up in the air. Uh, I've talked to a number of attorneys who uh, deal in this area, and they don't know if you need a separate LLC or a separate corporation. I think that from a, uh, a best practice standpoint, uh, we have always strongly recommended that the transportation authority be separate from the broker's authority and or the freight forward authority. This had a lot has to do with providing insurance. All you know who have provided insurance for a long time for transportation companies with broker's authority there's very difficult to get auto liability coverage, particularly the symbols you need uh, when you have these operations uh, combined under one legal entity. Even though you have two separate MC numbers, this is still a big consideration. 
to be able to be a better insured, you must have two separate legal entities. So as we go forward, it's our strong suggestion that you have two separate, that the insureds have two separate legal entities, one providing transportation and one providing brokerage or freight forwarding services uh, to the public. Again, that's not a requirement as we read it. Uh, I, this is up in the air. Some of my lawyers think it is. Uh, again, I have not found it to be firm enough to be able to tell you that it is. I will tell you that as you're talking to your insureds, they should have two separate legal entities. It makes it better all the way around. In respect of that, if they already have two MC numbers, then there's no action is needed. But as we read the law, there needs to make clear to the customer if the carrier is operating as a transportation company or a broker or a freight forwarder, which will require you to make sure they're separate phone numbers, separate people, in other words, that they're dealing with, separate address, separate legal uh, letterheads showing not both entities or both operations, but one for transportation and one for brokerage, need to make sure that the invoices sent to customers are either brokerage or, trans or transportation uh, services, not uh, or freight forward services, not on the same type of invoices, and any contracts that you that the insureds have with customers or trucking companies or other truckers, they must clearly separate the transportation business from the motor from the brokerage and or freight forward business. So irrespective of how they operate, and even if they have two separate entities, you need to go back and look at it to make sure that it is separated, that there's no uh, gray area or fuzzy area between the two, that clearly the public can determine when a load is hauled how it was done, arranged, either as a broker or a transportation company. Again, all this must be done as effective 10-1-2013. Bond increase. If already a broker, with a separate MC number, then they need to increase the $10,000 uh, bond on file now to the $75,000 as of October 1st, 2013. If there's a new business, meaning that they have separated from the motor carrier, they spun off their brokerage operation from the motor carrier's operation because they now hold the authority under the same MC uh, number for both transportation and brokerage, and they must spin this off. It's our suggestion to go ahead and get the new authority now, spend the businesses off, create a brokerage operation, and have the uh, uh, obtain a new authority as a broker. That will require a ten thousand dollar bond, and this would always would we need to go ahead and get that in place, and then as of a uh, ten one two thousand thirteen, that ten thousand dollar bond can be increased to seventy five thousand. But again, don't wait to the last. Go ahead and separate the authority. Go ahead and get it operated uh, twice, I mean, two different entities or two different at least MC numbers and get the uh, get it in place as soon as possible. The blog I did last week and also a presentation that we did for W. Love got Hank Seaton and I together. And he asked us, could we put a bond program together uh, for his brokers, relying on a long-term friendship with Security Bonds Associates Inc. and Bert and Chris Harrison, uh, who taught CIC with me, and we've been friends for 30 years. I called them up and said, hey, guys, can we do this? And they started working on it, and we came up with a plan, a program that we're talking about today. The, uh, both Bert and Chris are on the call here, and later if we have any questions, particularly uh, as dealing with this, they'll be more than willing to answer it. But again, they're long-term friends of ours, and they have been a supporter of our program. Hank will have his clients that he'll deal, deal directly with. Then we are offering to the Motor Carriers and Church Education Foundation memberships this bond program. We want to limit it to, or at least our part of it, to the Motor Carriers and Church Education Foundation. Why? It's to protect the program. We want to make sure that the agents knows about brokers, freight forwarders, bonding, transportation. We're allowing on the members and the members' agents to provide quality brokers or freight forwarders for the for this program. In other words, the first underwriting is you guys. Uh, you know what the brokers are. You know the good brokers of the, from the bad, and we want to make sure to preserve this program long term to make sure that the bonding uh, the, the brokers or the freight forwarders we bring within this program are of quality. 
and we do not have problems as we uh, deal later. So again, this is going to be a program designed for members of the Motor Carriers Insurance Education Foundation, not just for the public. We also have asked Hank to help control the exposure to put a best practice together uh, that we would hope uh, the agents would share with their broker and modify their current agreements if necessary. Uh, the agents should confirm to the broker that they are meeting these best practices, or at least most of them as outlined by Hank. And again, you can download these later. We have it here for Hank, and the suggestion is to make it clear uh, to the trucking company uh, concerning when they're going to be paid, uh, the time frame only on the receipt uh, from the uh, shipper to, uh, with a clear bill of uh, receipt and things like this. But it's important that the broker keeps the operation separate. Hanks also suggested even to have an escrow account to have the money that is due uh, the trucking company kept separately from the operating account of the broker. Uh, these are things that we would welcome, recommend that you discuss with the broker if uh, you need more uh, help from other uh, lawyers or other people to help you with this. We can refer you to Hank or Jay Taylor or Rob Mosley who specialize in these areas and they can work with your insurance to minimize the exposure from uh, the, a trucking company coming back against your insurance when the bill due for the transportation is not technically due yet meaning that uh, we ha that your insured has not received the money from the shipper and or uh, there was not a clean uh, receipt that was uh, provided by the shipper. Uh, these are areas that will create a claim against a bond that really is not legitimate. The documents and the relationship between the bonding company and the freight forwarder and the trucking company will line out uh, when payment is due and therefore we will have a benchmark to know whether the claim that motor carrier is uh, bringing against the bond should be paid or not. As a part of this program, we're going to have Hank and, uh, and knowledgeable people handling uh, these claims so that we will not pay the claims that are not legitimate. And, uh, and the way to do that, or to help do that, is make sure all the documents uh, uh, become uh, uh, solid and that we know what they are. All right, let's talk about our program. Here's the overview and underwriting. Uh, it's for brokers and freight forwards, the standard requirements. The base premium is 3%. And here's something that some of you might find interesting. The bonding company, as we have now, is requiring no collateral. If the broker or freight forwards do not meet the standard requirements, the premium will be adjusted upward. We do not contemplate any collateral requirements increased. In other words, the bonding company is ascertaining the risk they have, and they would adjust additional exposure because of not meeting the standard uh, financial requirements with premium, not collateral. Let us know if your broker is a member of a trade association and which one. We do have some credits available if there are members of certain trade associations that a broker can be a member of that would have certain standards and ethical requirements to be a part of that association, and that will be a consideration in our pricing. But the bottom line is the basic premium is $2,250, uh, and no collateral will be required. Here are the standard requirements for the base premium. Three years in the business. Guys, you all know how to verify this. As you look at the application, go into License Insurance, look up the MC number, and that will show how when they were given brokerage authority. Uh, and that would be the three years. If they're not in three years, then we need a verification that the owner has three years of experience. Again, find out who they work for as a broker, or if it was this new broker's entity because of the MAP 21 requirement to spin off brokers for motor carriers, go in with the motor carrier and the broker's combined MC number and print that off out of license insurance. In other words, the way to verify that the broker has been licensed by the FMCSA to be a broker and the best way to conform, uh, confirm that is to license insurances to the SAFER webpage. Uh, you all, everybody on this line uh, clearly should know how to do that and make sure that then you send that in to uh, show that they have been in business uh, for the length of time here. We are requiring a business financial statement uh, reflecting a, a positive uh, network. This needs to be done by an outside accounting firm, not their own. 
They're going to be looking at operation profitability. They'll, business will have some ratings, not necessarily done in Bradstreet, but typical rating. Plus, the owner's credit score will be checked. And the owner's credit score would be four, 700 or better, the combined score if there's more than one owner here. So they're looking at a business with a uh, financial statement that has a positive net worth, an operation profitability, a favorable business rating, and a favorable credit score of the owner themselves of 700. That is the benchmark to be the standard requirements to justify the 2250 uh, premium. If the credit score of 700 is not met or the financial statements are not favorable, there would be a premium adjustment, uh, but probably no additional collateral requirement. There is no personal guarantee required as long as the business has a net worth of $200,000 or more. If there is a not if the broker's entity does not have the net worth of two hundred thousand dollars or more, there will be a personal indemnity. There is no personal financial statement requirement; just a personal indemnity uh, for uh, the brokers or freight forwarders who do not have two hundred thousand dollar worth in the legal entity that will be issuing uh, the bond to. Here is the required information that you must gather and send in with your application. A financial statement, end of the year, reported by an outside accountant, a CPA or other type of an accountant. A current in-house financial statement, year to date, including a balance sheet and profit and loss statement. If there's a new operation, again because of the MAP 21, it had been combined and they have spun it off, send the combined end of the year financial statement of the both transportation and brokerage entity together and uh, reflecting both transportation and brokerage income and sh or freight forward income as well as a balance sheet of the new broker entity, meaning how much funds were put into the broker, the new entities to start it up. They will consider those combined information. Again, the information needs to reflect a positive net worth and cash flow for a profitable operation. They also need a current bank statement on the business showing that there's funds within the bank. And if there's a line of credit, the status of their line of credit. Lexon, who is our bonding company application, also must be fully completed and signed by the owner of the brokerage or freight forward operation. You all have been in many of my programs, or most of you who are listening here, and you know my attitude towards a completed application. Here, this is going to be critical to get through this seamlessly is to have the application completed, all questions answered, and the insured signing the application, as well as the required information to be sent. Uh, so again, financial statements, end of the year by an outside accountant, current in-house financial year to date, including the balance sheets and profit and loss. Again, if there are new brokers concerned, and because of the past uh, combining of transportation and brokerage operation, then we need to have the combined financial statement year end of the year of the of the entities operating in both brokerage and transportation, and a balance sheet of the new brokerage operation and the new entity. We were looking for a, there, the bonding company is looking for a positive net worth and cash flow that would be appropriate for the operation. We do need checking accounts uh, on, the, on the bank statements showing that there is uh, funds available to pay uh, the outstanding debts. And if there's a line of credit, which is favorable, then, uh, which is a favorable thing to have, uh, then they need to verify that how much those lines of credits are and uh, that the bank is still uh, uh, committing to those lines of credits. And again, Lexon's completed side application. Now, if you have provided the bond for the broker in the past, this is going to be a very strong plus to get this thing done easily and simply and at, a, uh, at, and at the desired premium. Please let us know that how long you have provided this, uh, the broker the bond. Again, freight forwards would not be involved in this because freight forwards did not have to have bonds previously, just the property brokers. And let us know if they've had any claims during the time that you have provided a bond from, for them and the basis of those claims and let us know who the current bond is with. That will expedite getting the process if you have uh, completed quicker, if you have a history uh, with the bonding company, I mean with the brokerage in the past. Now once this is done, you need to return the full submission to Security Bond Associates, Inc., 
will download all this stuff at their address here. You can send it by mail, snail mail if you want to. There's a fax number here or two email addresses that you can send this complete operation or complete application to, including all information that's required. Upon approval, agent uh, and then the bonding company will look at uh, uh, the SBAI will then review it, uh, send it to uh, Lexon for their underwriting approval. The, once it's approved, the agent will be notified of the approval and the premium it was approved at. They will be sent bond forms and demi forms. They will be emailed to the agent for the agent to obtain the signature of the owners. Again, you're going to have to deal with their owners at least twice. One is to get the application signed, and two is to get the indemnity form and the bond uh, form signed. This is a requirement. Once the owner has signed the forms, please email a copy of it back to SBAI to review to make sure that it has been completed and it was completed properly. I don't have to tell you how often there's a couple lines left out or a name change is different or misspelling. The bonding company, uh, SBAI, wants to make sure that the form was filled out properly and the right names and the right uh, places and the right areas that are signed. Then the agent will be notified of the acceptance of the forms and final premium if there's any needed to adjustment of the premium uh, once the, the form has been approved by SBIR to have been uh, completed. Agent then must mail the original bond and indemnity form and the net premium. The program will provide the agent a 10% commission, and so you would return 90% of the premium of the bond, and you retain your 10%. The forms and the bond needs to be mailed again to SBAI at their address in Miami. The agent then, upon receipt of this information, the agent will be notified that the bond has been electronically filed with the FMCSA and accepted by the FMCA. You should have time to complete the process before the effective date. Uh, needed premium will be annual from the effective date. So you can go ahead and get things in place, collect it. The premium, the clock on the premium, earned premium will not start until the effective date of the bond. If there is a need to send to the FMCSA now, which we hope would be rare, particularly now as we move into the new bonding requirement, but later it might be, you can request a, from uh, SBIA to make those arrangements done quicker, meaning after they have seen the application and the indemnity form signed properly with assurance that you will be mailed to them with a check, they will go ahead and they can go ahead and request uh, the bond uh, to be sent. Uh, electronically sent to FMCSA, but in these cases it's up to you, the agent, to be responsible to make sure that SBAI gets all the proper forms and uh, the money. It's better off to get it done beforehand, that way it will not be a problem, but in case of an emergency they are they understand that it might need to be done quickly and they would be in position to do that on an exception basis, but when it's done you, the agent, need to make sure that you understand that you're responsible for the premium uh, and responsible to get the paperwork sent to them as it has been emailed to them. All right, that's the criteria. Again, very simple, complete application, financial information, information on the owners. Uh, premium is going to be based on the credit uh, score of the uh, owners and also of the financial rating and financial statement and profitability of the bonding company itself. So that's the basic criteria. Now here's the problem. 2-1-2013, everything's going to come down to crunch, and there's going to be a major push here. Currently, the FMCSA is not even in position to accept the $75,000 bond. Uh, they are only now still accepting the $10,000 bond. But it's our strong recommendation to don't wait to the last minute. There will be a major push the closer we get to 2010. Go ahead and complete the process now. Get the approval now so you know everything's in place and get the final premium confirmed. Possible credits if they're members of certain trade associations. Again, the basic premium of $2,250 or other premiums that would be needed if they don't have all, meet all the financial uh, requirements to, be, to get the standard premium. 
premium. All premium will start when the bond is effective to uh, October 1st, 2013. So even if you send the application, get it approved in July or August, the insured will not suffer any premium, uh, earn premium until the bond is effective. Uh, we would suggest for you to go ahead and collect the money now. Again, it can wait uh, uh, if it's up to you to, to collect later. It would obviously be easier to do it all at one time. And we hope that not having collateral requirement would offset the uh, premium uh, considerations here. The agent must forward the premium to SBAI 30 days prior to the effective date. And it's up to the agent's obligation to do this. Again, uh, this would be a consideration for writing it. There could be some rare exceptions to that, but we hope not many. So let's don't wait. Get it in place. If it's a new broker, mainly those who have, are spun off from a motor carrier, that needs to make application to FMCA, FMCSA today to obtain brokerage authority and that new name and new MC number. That would require a $10,000 bond. Uh, again, complete all applications, the $10,000 bond can be uh, provided, and then the approval for the $75,000 bond would be done simultaneously, and the premium would be noted for that. And so at 10-1, the $10,000 bond will be upgraded uh, to the $75,000 requirement, and the premium will be prorated between the period of time that the $10,000 bond was in force and the premium and the uh, $75,000 uh, uh, upgrade uh, time frame. So your insured would not be penalized for this. It would be seamless this way, and you can take the transaction all, all at once. Freight forwarders who have not had to have a bond in the past need to be prepared by 10-1-2013. So if you have any freight forwarders, there's not a question of upgrading from 10,000 to 75,000. They know they know they have to go ahead and get it in place. Uh, and again, we encourage you to do this as soon as possible. That's a long discussion uh, here. Uh, again, you know how to contact us. If you have any questions, uh, email us at trs at ibci.net, or you can call Beth or me at the phone number shown here, 239-997-4084. Uh, we will post this uh, uh, the bond uh, from the, the requirements from SBAI is on the, uh, the checklist is the previous is the page that you have here. I know that you probably can't uh, read this. We will post uh, this, the, everything that we talked about, the standard conditions and everything we talked about here, as well as the cover sheet for SBAI to send back to them a checklist of what they have to have for process and a copy of the Lexon uh, Security Group's application uh, for uh, the property bond, the BMC 84 uh, bond, and the information you have to complete. This will be available to you uh, from our web page. If you want to uh, email uh, Beth at the TRS at IBCI.net, we will also email you back all this application, uh, all this information today. Clearly, you can make as many copies as you want as long as uh, the originals are signed. Again, the contact money number, if you have any questions, uh, please call us at the uh, address we have here. All applications will be sent to SBAI, which has their information on the uh, applications and on the forms we're going to send you. Uh, again, it's posted on the TRS uh, Transportation Risk Specialist.com website under the archives, under the Brokers Freight Forward Bond Program, how to find this. Now, you all might have some questions. Uh, I'm sure you, you all might know from the previous webinars, if you have any questions now, uh, you can type them in and we'll uh, attempt to answer them. Uh, at this point in time. Uh, Chris or Bert, are there anything that you want to add to what we just went through? No, I think it was a good discussion. Okay, then and tell them you're looking forward to doing business with them. <laughs> yes, we are. We're looking forward to doing business with everybody. Okay. Uh, all right, guys, if that's everything, if there's no questions, we really appreciate your attendance, and we will get this information out to you. We hope this will be an added benefit uh, to becoming a part of our, uh, our, our TRS and insurance and the Motor Carriers Insur Insurance Education Foundation and uh, meet your needs of your insureds who are brokers or freight forwards. Again, thank you for being members. Thank you for I listening mean, to us. Go ahead, Bert. They can call us here on an 800 number if they have any questions about the bonds. the requirements.
you know, when you're filling them out. Okay, that 800 number is on the cover sheet that has a heading SBAI. You can call Chris or 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 or, or Bert or um, what's the uh, what's the other lady's name? Lisette. Lisette. Chris or Bert or Lisette. If you have any questions concerning this thing, if you've got a, a marginal area, if you want to discuss with them what do they think about meeting the criteria of what the premium would be if they don't have the uh, standards that that uh, meet the full standards, they'll give you some indications on that. Uh, they're good people and they're willing to work for you. And we look forward to getting this kicked off, and we look forward to getting uh, applications and moving forward. Uh, sooner the better. Again, we are anticipating a crunch at the very end, and we want to make sure that we've got uh, plenty of time to properly do this, so we're all not uh, in, a, in, a, in the last mood and the panic mood. We all make mistakes when they're in panic mood. And again, we look for good insurance and good uh, uh, bonding and freight forward companies to be a part of this, property brokers and freight forward companies to be a part of this. Uh, that's the way as everybody knows to keep a stable program and again to get the company to agree to not require the security is a big plus and that is a, a promise on our part that we'll be doing with, with bonding and freight forward companies who meet uh, high standards and agents who are producing the business with high standards. All right guys, have a good weekend. We look forward to uh, your continued uh, participation in our program. Uh, we're working on blogs and other things uh, now, and that will end the presentation. Again, uh, it will be recorded on our site, and we thank you for your attention. We're over and out.